Hello everyone, you found your way to the second of these resource videos for Physics 117 and in this one we're going to share some ideas about how to do well in the course. There's 10 kind of ideas on the next 10 slides. As you watch me go through them, you probably think you know what's coming. You certainly will have heard some, if not most of it, before. Um, so these might come as no surprise, but one or two of them might. So bear with me for the next 10 minutes or so as we, uh, as we dip, zip through these. So if you watch the first one of these videos, you will have seen this phrase up there, um, but I think it bears repeating. Learning is a contact sport. You have to participate. It's not something that is done to you, okay? Learning takes place, takes place within your brain. It's supported by going to lectures and tutorials and working with people, but really uh, it's, it's all about you. And in many cases, there's not that many shortcuts to real, deep, lasting understanding. So make contact and, uh, and get stuck in. I touched on this one previously as well. Um, memorization is not the same as learning. So in this course, we will not ask you to define or cite Newton's third law or Kepler's laws or anybody's laws. What we will do is we'll set you problems to see if you really know how to apply these fundamental laws or principles. Uh, and to be able to do that, that takes understanding. It's not enough to be able to say for everybody there is an e you know, two objects equal and opposite action and reaction. Um, you need to really understand it. So understanding should be your goal. We're not really interested in, in memorization, which is why you can take notes and a formula sheet into the, uh, into the exams. Here's one that, that, let me try and convince you that this statement actually is true. Tests are good for you. Um, there's a whole body of research evidence now in a relatively new field called learning sciences, which combines elements of psychology and education and neuroscience and cognitive science about how people learn. And it turns out one of the main conclusions from that body of work is that Tests or exams or assessments are not really or are not simply just a measure of what you know. They're not just like a thermometer that we use to, to take your learning temperature, as it were. They're actually opportunities to enhance your learning. The act of taking a test helps it stick in your mind better than reading a textbook or highlighting your notes, or condensing your notes, or summarizing your notes. And that's been a finding from, from sort of carefully controlled psychology studies. So, if tests are good for you, and they actually support your learning, as well as measure your learning, what we want to do is we want to give you frequent, but fairly small, and therefore low stakes tests, to give you the opportunity to practice as you go along. And there's another thing, sort of thinking about doing tests relatively f frequently. You can think of preparing for these tests as doing an amount of your revision for the course as you go along. So you've not got it all looming at the end of the course when you have to prepare for the final exam, which is the, the single biggest assessment on the course. Number four is about math. This is not a math course, but it uses it as a core tool for problem solving. So if you feel or if you find that your mathematical preparedness or fluency, and by fluency I mean the speed at which you can do algebraic manipulations or differentiate trig functions or anything like that, if you find that your fluency is not as good as it might be, then we would urge you to, to shore this up by paying attention to areas where you, you find yourself to be weaker. 
either in your math courses or, or, or through practice. And the reason for, for asking you that or asking you to do that is when we set you a physics problem, we want you to be able to solve the, the, the physics problem, not get stuck for 10 minutes trying to remember how exactly you, you use the product or the chain rule or how you differentiate one function cos squared or something like that. So it's really about helping you be fluent and confident with the mathematical tools that you'll need to succeed in this course. Number five is about planning, or more specifically, planning ahead. In the first of these videos, I talked about how we have this three-week interleaving rhythm. So in any given week, you're going to be reading ahead for what needs to be done next week, doing what we're doing this week in class, and doing tutorial work around what we covered last week in class, or maybe taking a test on it. And, you know, that takes a little bit of organization to keep on top of that. And we recognize that, you know, the workload, we've tried to ensure that the workload's reasonable in this course. There's no lab component. It's a, a, a reasonable workload. It's not a course that's going to take you 15 hours a week to, uh, to keep on top of stuff. Um, but that said, it's only one of a number of five or however many courses you're taking, plus I would hope you have a life outside of your formal academic work as well at, at, at university. So keeping on top of this and, and planning for it, especially if, especially if you, you come down with a cold or you, you know, you've got to go home for Thanksgiving or something like that, keeping on top of all this requires you to plan properly and plan ahead. The next one's similar to plan, it's, it's prepare, but this is specifically about preparing before you come to class. Uh, in short, do the pre-reading and do the reading quiz and do it faithfully rather than just skimming it, looking for the answers and doing the least amount of work that you, that you possibly can. Because if nothing else, this will highlight the areas in which you need to pay closest attention in the lectures and tutorials that follow. Um, not doing this, not preparing adequately, and sort of stacking it all up towards the end of the course and thinking, ah, it's okay, I've got a week between the end of classes and the exam. That's a dangerous strategy. I'm not going to say it never works for some students because it, it does and it always has. But it's a dangerous strategy and I have seen students get into that situation and come unstuck as a result of it. Um, number seven is around engage. Uh, if the last one was about what to do before coming to class, this is about what to do in class. And if you saw the first video, you heard me speak about this, so I'll be brief here. Um, engage. Talk to your neighbours. Talk to us. Talk to your TAs. Talk to each other online through the discussion forum. Come to our office hours, right? There's a whole wealth of, of support. And, you know, we will tell you when you're sort of monopolizing, right? Don't see us as your personal tutor. We can't do that with 350 students in, uh, in the course. But, you know, do engage with us and, and, and the other people on the course, such as the TAs and the other students. Um, practice and make the practice count as well. Um, there's no substitute for really having a go at something yourself and a trap that people often fall into is to look at something and say yeah I, 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 I can do that and convince yourself that you're able to do a problem when actually there's no substitute for, for having a go at it. Practice is so, you're going to be sick of hearing me talk about the importance of practice by the end of this, this course. But it's so fundamental to, uh, to being able to succeed in the course that we're going to come back to it during, uh, during another one of these videos. Nearly there. Number nine, collaborate. There, there's a number of assessments in this course that absolutely, you know, as a matter of academic integrity, need to be done individually. So um, the individual components of your exams, the midterms, the tests, the reading quizzes, that has to be your work. But beyond that, 
we really would encourage you to collaborate with each other, get together and form study groups. Right? Find a, a, a buddy to work together on practice problems or clicker questions. Help each other refine understanding. Um, and you know, when students do that, everyone benefits, even the best students. So there will be a range of prior experience and ability with, uh, with physics courses. There always is in large first year classes. But in our experience, even the very, very good students benefit from talking to their peers and actually having to explain your understanding, to voice it. It can sometimes be quite remarkable how much clearer something becomes when you actually have to explain it to, uh, to someone else. And the final one, number 10, is maybe something you weren't experiencing, uh, you weren't expecting. Uh, and it's be careful. Now, let me explain what I, what I mean by this. Many of you will have seen a lot, or most, or maybe even all of this material before. And you're probably thinking, yeah, I got a great mark in Physics 12, or in my IB course, or whatever preparation you did prior to, uh, to coming to UBC in terms of physics. And I'm sure you did. And a lot of this material will look familiar, but let me assure you, an awful lot of it is not as simple as it looks. And I base that on you know, nearly 20 years of teaching courses at, at the first year level in mechanics, in electricity and magnetism, uh, and in other, other areas as well. So there's, there's elements of this course where it's really quite tricky. There's new material for many of you in the course, and there's a greater, if you like, mathematical formulism to the course. So a greater use of mathematics as the, uh, as the principal tool. And, and there's, a, there's a really nice quote that's often used to sort of highlight the dangers of being over-familiar or overconfident with something. It's attributed to, to many people, including Mark Twain. And it says, the trouble ain't what people know, it's what they know that ain't so. So just be careful of that as you go through the course. Resist the temptation to think, I've done this for three years in a row, therefore there's nothing here that can surprise me or that I don't fully understand. So there we are, that's um, advice on how to do well. We're going to come back to these 10 suggestions uh, later in the course. The next one of these is going to be out in a few weeks time, so I'll see you then.